coin. Do you guys remember doing that? A little bit maybe. So um, this whole unit is based off of the idea that we want to get information from a population. But getting information from a population can be very difficult. So let's talk about if we wanted to get the average income of the uh, people that live in Magna. Now, if you think about what that would take, hopefully you understand that that would be quite a costly and timely endeavor because you would need to be able to track down every resident in Magna including you guys if you work, get their yearly income, add them all together, and then divide them by the total number of residents. The math is not too hard, but the process would be very difficult. Do you guys agree? Like we'd be having to add thousands of numbers. And we could do it, but we don't need to do it because instead we can take a sample. And that's what this whole unit is based off of. It's based off of getting information about a big group of people or animals or things and being able to estimate things about them by just taking a small sample. This area of statistics is called inference. We're going to take a sample and make inferences about the population. So inference is estimating inference is estimating a characteristic of a population using sample statistics. Usually we take a sample because it's quicker or cheaper or easier. So this is just a visual of what um, taking a sample looks like. This would be your entire population. Taking a sample would be taking a subset of that population. So we have like, what, maybe 50 people in this population. We're going to take a sample of six people. So a sample is a subset of a larger population. We want to know um, about population a lot of the things that we've already been talking about this year. So we might want to know the range of incomes in Magna. So that would be the um, highest income subtract the lowest income. But we know that income is strongly right skewed. So maybe instead we want to find the IQR of the income in Magna. So we could find the average income, we could find the range of the income, we could find the IQR of the income, we could estimate the maximum income or the minimum income. So all of the statistics that we talked about in Unit 1, like the five number, five number summary, I should name it to the five numery. Then I could take out some words. Cali, five numery right? Probably not. People would think I, I know not what I'm doing. But that five number summary, we can estimate those things about a population. When we do that, we have to know the difference between what the population number is and what the sample number is. So those have their own names. If it is a value from the population, it is called a parameter. One easy way, or I should say one helpful way of remembering that is that parameter and population both start with a P. So a parameter is a number that describes a characteristic of a population. And then I'm going to highlight both of the P's, parameter and population. Now it has a little asterisk next to it, and I switched these, but I made a mistake and didn't switch your asterisks. So the asterisk that matches this parameter is just this statement down here. 
In statistical practice, the value of a parameter is usually not known because we cannot examine the entire population. Either we, we literally can't, like we're not able to, or it's just unrealistic or too costly. So unfortunately, these didn't line up, but these two things go together. So how we get around that, how we get around not knowing a parameter is by using a statistic. So a statistic is a number that describes the sample that we took from the population. So if it's coming from the population, it's called a parameter. And if it's coming from a sample, it's called a statistic. So just like I did on the last one, I'm going to highlight the S in statistic and the S in sample. So let's get like a, a real example of where you would need to be able to distinguish between the two. So we have a business owner problem. A business owner wants to know the average household income in her business, her business's zip code. She randomly samples 80 households in the zip code and finds their mean income to be 46,144. So let's just remind ourselves, some of us might need this, that the mean is the same thing as the average. You don't need to write that down if you if that's not you didn't need that reminder. But when we say mean income, we mean average income. So we want to identify the population. Well, in this case, the population is all the households in the zip code. So we're going to write down all households in the zip code. That's our population. So what's our parameter? Our parameter then is the mean or average income of all households in the zip code. Which is probably going to be it's probably not going to be possible to, for us to actually find that average income. So instead, we'll take a sample. Our sample is n equals 80. And that sample is the surveyed households. So 80 surveyed households. So we have a population of thousands of households. We're going to look at 80 households because that's much more manageable. What is our statistic? The mean income of the sample. So we're going to use the mean income of the 80 houses the 80 households, I should say, to estimate the mean income of the entire population. So the last element of this that is really important is the symbols that we are supposed to use for these parameters and statistics. So when we talk about a population mean, we write down mu. So this guy next to parameter would be mu back from our normal unit when we said we have a normal distribution of mu and sigma, it's that same mu. The statistic is x bar. And in this case, x bar was equal to one, just kidding, four, six, one, four, four. So now we know 
we're going to need to keep an eye out for these different symbols. If it says mu, we actually know the population value. If it says x bar, we actually know the, um, sorry, we don't actually know. We have a sample value. Population for sample size is capital N, and then population, sorry, I said that weirdly. The population sample, not sample, the population size is N. The sample size is little n. So the true number in the population is capital N, the sample is little n. Um, down here, this asterisk goes with the sample. So the value of a statistic can be computed directly from the sample. And then we use that statistic to estimate for the population. So population, we typically don't know, and it's usually too much work to actually get that info. So instead, we take a sample, we actually calculate the average or the proportion or the range, and then we use that as our estimate for the population. So this business owner is going to conclude that the average income of her of the households around her business is about $46,000. You're hanging in there? Yes? Okay. So this is a summary of this page. A statistic estimates a parameter. A statistic estimates a parameter. The most common ones that you will see are the following. X bar estimates mu. So those are both averages. These are both means. P hat estimates P. And in this case, we're talking about a percent or a proportion of the population. So for now, I think it would be good for us to write percent instead of proportion. Let me give you an example of um, what P would be. So let's say we want to estimate the percent of people that watched the inauguration yesterday. So if our population is, let's say, the United States, the entire United States, we want to estimate the percent that watched the inauguration. That's impossible. There's no way we're going to be able to contact every single person in the U.S. So we'll take a sample and calculate P hat. P hat is the percent of people in the United States, or sorry, in our sample that watched the inauguration. So mu is something like average income. P is something like percent of people that watch something. You're going to get a problem about potato chips where you're estimating the percent of the bag that's um, blemished potato chips. Do you guys know what blemished potato chips are? The grody ones that no one eats. Do you eat the green ones? I don't eat the green ones. They creep me out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they just, I mean, they probably taste the same as the creep me out or the, the ones that have like a big black yucky thing in the middle. Listen, I eat a lot of chips, so I know what these blemishes look like. So mean is a number that you can average. Proportion or percent is going to be the number of people or things that did something. Then lastly, S small s, lowercase s, estimates sigma. So remember, this is standard deviation. These are, these are our most common. So these are the most common statistics and parameters we investigate. But they are not the only ones. So to the side here, I'm just going to make a note for myself. 
that we could also estimate the range of a population or the IQR or the median, etc. It's not just percent, average, or standard deviation. You could estimate any of the statistical values that we have talked about. These, unfortunately, do not have a nice symbol like these do. These are so common that we actually have a symbol for the sample and the population. For these ones, we don't have special symbols to distinguish between the population and the sample. So biggest takeaway from this page, we want to know things about a population. Easiest way to do that is to estimate it by taking a sample. You're feeling OK? OK. So let's have you get in and do uh,